In this episode, the main work continues in the head slash bathroom. What I needed to do was start getting onto the plumbing, which actually did affect things. And it was sort of slow going a little bit with all of these details. I've had to drill some more holes, which obviously will need epoxy coating to protect all that wood and plywood. But I'm very pleased to say that I got the holding tank supports fully sorted and installed, and it's come up really good. I also do a couple of other little smaller jobs just to sort of keep the ball rolling on finishing work for some other things. Please give me a like to help me out. It's a very easy thing to do. Subscribe if you haven't, which will really help me in my efforts to grow this channel. Leave a comment because as I always say, I like reading what you have to say.
So the last thing I need to do before I can actually bolt this toilet down onto that pedestal top and then bolt the whole piece in place is to drill one hole through that pedestal top in order to supply water to the toilet. As it turns out, there is quite a lot of plumbing that goes into this toilet, which is common for marine toilets. It's not like a house where by comparison, a toilet in a house is very, very simple. So I need to work out where that hole will be so that I can drill it and then get on with installing the plumbing. So this is where all the plumbing starts for the head, for the toilet itself. This pipe here, which I've welded to the hull, is on the opposite side of the keel than the discharge side itself, for obvious reasons. You don't want to be sucking raw water in right below the area where you're going to be discharging. And of course, like every opening, 
below the waterline has a through-hull valve. All of mistresses are ball valves and they're all 316 stainless steel as well. So from this point on, because I can isolate the water with that valve, I'll be using the John Guest styled plastic fittings, both the hose itself and the fittings. As I say, this is where I start into the heads and it'll be beneath that pedestal shelf. And like a lot of things lately, it's great to be moving on towards getting things actually functional and working in Mistress. Well, after the second attempt at getting those knees in, <laughs> they are in the right place now. Oh, I tell you, sometimes you make some pretty silly mistakes. Anyway, fortunately, I realised just as I finished them that the knees were sitting in the position that those bearers needed to be. Thankfully, I was able to just remove them, re-sand where they needed to go, scrape off that epoxy glue, reapply it, 
put them in place and then after checking that now they are not going anywhere so now of course what i need to do is fit those bearers on top and what i'm going to do for that is i don't want to permanently bond them something that some people may not understand is in terms of how to install things going right back to the original fit out some people really don't want to cover the hole they want to leave that open others fully close it up so that if you wanted to get to the hull it involves wrecking things what i've done here on mistress is i've gone kind of in the middle i did want to insulate mistress and also have lining so that i could mount things from the lining itself rather than have to rely on the hull and brackets and re-welding bits and pieces the plywood lining is a surface that all sorts can be mounted to but what I have done with everything, and it may not look like it, I've always had in mind, should anything need to be removed in any space, how am I going to do that without wrecking things? And so this is just a small example. Those knees that those bearers are sitting on are epoxied to the lining, so they will not be going anywhere. But I don't want to epoxy those bearers on top because if I have to remove something in the head here, in order to get to the hull itself i know already everything that's in place that i would have to remove in order to get to the hull i've only used the fixtech 15 product which is excellent in terms of adhesion but things can be disassembled with a bit of effort but they're not kind of epoxy or permanently bonded such that if you needed to pull it apart it would involve wrecking things i have had three times where i've had to remove lining panels Fix 15 was used with screws to hold them in place and it really was not a big deal to remove those. That's what I'll do now though. So a quick sand, wipe them down, fix 15 and then I can get on with making up the struts which will go underneath. I've decided to make those out of stainless steel tube. The same tube that I'll use behind that toilet seat when that's raised to protect that. Well, that's looking good. Now that that's in place, that's the main structure for these three things in the head here, the bathroom. The pedestal is sorted. And now that those main support bearers are in place for that holding tank, it's onto the finishing touches with regards to struts and coming up with a framework and door to cover that. Please give me a like to help me out. It's a very easy thing to do subscribe if you haven't which will really help me in my efforts to grow this channel please check out my website also where you can find some merchandise again to help support this channel leave a comment because as i always say i like reading what you have to say